program. This is our only culturally tailored nutrition and lifestyle program that brings us practical tips, nutrition education, and support for Black African Caribbeans living in the UK, but also Africans across you know the world. Because now we have these sessions streamed live on YouTube and Facebook, so people are able to join from you know across the world. Each week we have nutritionists, dietitians, and public health experts talking to us on various nutrition and health topics. And, and we have the recording of all of these sessions on the Khan website, um, on YouTube and Facebook. So if you're interested in any of our talks, please do visit those um, platforms and you will have access to all of our resources um, over the last three years. I'm your host, Dr. Hibara Mausekwesi. I'm a registered nutritionist and a lecturer in the UK. Today we have um, a topic. I think this was a suggestion from one of our um, 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 our participants. You know, um, on, on healthy hearts, we want the topics to address our needs as a community. So each week we ask people to make suggestions and then we find experts who can address these topics. So this was one of the topics that um, someone suggested to me about three weeks ago, I had a call and the person was like, can we get someone to talk to us about sickle cell and nutrition? Because we know that as Blacks, you know, a lot of us, um, sickle cell disease is really prevalent within our community. So what is the role of diet? How can nutrition help manage sickle cell disease is what we're going to talk about today. And to help us address this topic is our, and now I can call him our own um, registered dietitian. Why am I am I okay to say our own? Because now you become part of the Khan and Sahara family. You are I'm regular happy. face. I'm you are so happy, happy for us to say our own, your own dietitian. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. So please do join the discussion wherever you are. Facebook, YouTube. Put in your question. This. This is a very important topic. Sickle cell affects a lot of us. If not someone close to us in our family, we would know someone in our church, in our various religious organizations. You know, we all know someone who has either uh, the sickle cell trait, the disease, or a career. So this topic is very important. So please let's engage, ask all the questions, and then um, I'm sure Wise will do his best to address these for us. So Weiss, I think I would stop talking now and um, give you the floor if you are ready. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, um, um, Hiba. And uh, thanks to Sahara Nutrition for the opportunity once again. Um, I don't take this kind of opportunities lightly at all uh, because there are many of us out there so if you are selected you should be very happy and take it seriously so thank you once again i'm trying to share my screen um yeah it's shared now please am i is my screen visible yes, yes it is yeah all right yeah. all right thank you so um like hiba said uh, we are discussing sickle cell disease and nutrition. And um, my name is Wise Chukudi Lecha. I'm a dietitian and an author. And those are my books on the screen. And uh, I practice here in Ghana. And um, by way of outline, uh, we'll be looking at everything sickle cell. And um, sickle cell, we, we take a look at the condition, try to understand it. And then um, look at some of the preventive okay. measures. And also we'll be looking at the symptoms of the disease, mm -hmm. how it is diagnosed, and then um, complications, treatments. Then spend a lot of time on nutrition therapy. Um, that's where my real strength is. And also uh, summarize in some key messages. Um, so basically, um, I put this image here just to tease our minds. Um, those are images of red blood cells. Uh, we know that we have blood. 
and blood is life. Um, and when we go to the hospital, we do blood tests and all that. So, and then when we kill animals, we see their blood. So that is it. It is what carries the human life. Um, and uh, um, the, 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 when blood is put under the microscope, this is how it looks like. You can see the cells, um, this circular shaped stuff. Let me put it that way. And also the sickle cell is the ones that look like a sickle. Those ones are more uh, smaller and uh, not like the other cells. So these are the normal red blood cells and these are the sickle cells. So when we say sickle cell, sickle cell disease, sickle cell anemia, these are some of the things that you are referring to. Now, what is, what is sickle cell disease? Uh, sickle cell disease is a group of inherited red blood cell disorders. Uh, red blood cells are usually round and flexible, like you can see in the image at the top here. Uh, so they move easily through the blood. And with sickle cell disease, some red blood cells are shaped like sickles or crescents. So you can see the crescents, crescent shapes, crescent moon, that kind of shape. And um, or, okay, so they are silks shaped like sickles or crescent moons. They become rigid and sticky. These sickle sh cell shaped cells can slow or block blood flow. So um, instead of when they are of the normal shape, they move quicker, but then this can actually reduce the speed at which blood moves. The most common type of sickle cell disease is sickle cell anemia. And anemia means low blood levels. So this is how it works out or, or, or happens. The red blood cells usually live for about 120 days before they need to be replaced. So they die off usually after 120 days, the new ones are formed. And this is an active process that takes place in the body. Uh, when we eat, the body gains the nutrients or gathers the nutrients that it needs to build blood, um, ion, folic acid, vitamin B12, uh, proteins, carbohydrates, everything that the body needs to build blood is gotten from the food that we eat. So after every 20, 120 days, um, some red blood cells are dying, new ones are being formed in their place. Now, so I can say confidently that blood cells are formed every day because they are all not um, formed on a particular day, then they wait for 120 days to die off. No, once they are every day, some new ones are formed. After 120 days, those ones die off, they are replaced. That, that's how come that we don't run out of blood uh, completely before new ones are made, right? Um, but the sickle cells typically die in 10 to 20 days. So you can imagine 120 days. So um, that's about 10 times shorter lifespan compared to the regular or the normal blood cells. So the ones that are shaped wrongly, they die off within 10 to 20 days. So that leaves a shortage of red blood cells or that is what causes the anemia. Now, without enough red blood cells, the body can't get, get enough oxygen and this causes the fatigue. So one of the signs of sickle cell anemia um, or disease is fatigue. Now, without the enough red blood cells, it's not only oxygen that the body cannot move around easily or, or, or adequate enough of uh, adequate amounts of that, but food itself, food nutrients, the glucose from the breakdown of the starchy foods or carbohydrates cannot be moved around to energize the cells um, enough and um, amino acids cannot be moved around to repair protein tissues that are worn out. Fatty acids cannot be moved around. So everything goes wrong in terms of nourishing the body if you don't have enough blood. So this is the story of a sickle cell patient. Now, due to inheritance, some of their bl blood cells are not shaped well. And those that are not shaped well, they die off quickly, causing a shortage of uh, red blood cells. Now, so in the, this whole story that I said, this is a pictorial representation. It says that in sickle cell anemia, the red cells, 
red blood cells become rigid and sticky, like I said earlier, and are shaped like sickles or crescent moons. These irregularly shaped cells can get stuck in small blood vessels, which can slow or block blood flow and oxygen to parts of the body. Like I said earlier, not only oxygen, food nutrients, and then medications and anything that has to move in the blood, their flow becomes um, impeded um, or reduced to, or distribution reduced to other parts of the body. So you see the image at the top, the normal red cells or blood removes without much stress. And um, the ones that are secure, they see that they cross each other, they block the flow of blood and all that. Okay, so all this, the movement of the sickle cell blood, uh, sickle shaped blood cells, account for the signs and symptoms that sickle cell patients uh, do uh, uh, feel. Sickle cell anemia is caused by a change in genes that are involved in producing hemoglobin, an iron rich compound found in red blood cells. So that is the roots. Um, this condition is inherited from parents. Both parents must pass on the defective form of the gene for the child to get affected. So as I move on, we are going to get more clarity on these genes and inheritance and all that. For a baby to be born with sickle cell, both parents must carry a sickle cell gene. Um, sickle cell anemia most commonly affects people of African and Mediterranean and Middle Eastern descent. So um, again, statistics show that uh, we suffer more from this um, condition. In Africa, prevalence can be ranges from, can be up to 40% of the population, right? So a lot of studies have looked at 10%, 20%, 30%, 40%. So it's quite common and um, it's, a, it's a known problem here. Uh, now, how do we prevent this? So I was saying, making statements about sickle cell gene and all that. So, you know, genetics, that is why we look like our family members. That's one of the easiest ways that I, I explain genetics. I was in an earlier presentation prior to this talking about non-communicable diseases and um, trying to explain to my participants how non-communicable diseases or NCDs can be genetically transmitted or moved from in families. So if you, see that um, a family member develops stroke, your chances of getting it are higher. A family member develops diabetes, your chances of getting it um, are higher. Now, genes don't only make us look like our family members, but they also carry diseases. Now, the traits, um, if you are not carrying a sickle cell traits or disease traits, then your genes are represented AA. So the two double A's mean normal. The person who is carrying the traits but is not having the disease is described as AS. So many people are carriers. They are, they, when they do the lab tests, uh, HB electrophoresis, we call it, then they, it comes out as AS. Then AA means the person is not carrying any trait of the sickle cell. So if two parents, one is AA, the other is AS, they marry. These are the possibilities. They can produce AA, 50% of their produce or children can be normal without carrying any S or the sickle gene. Then half, 50% of the offspring can also be carriers, AS, but they are not bearing the disease at all. They are carriers, they are not having a disease. They can pass it on to uh, their produce or their offspring, but then they are not going to suffer sickle cell disease or sickle cell anemia. This is another scenario. If a parent is normal AA, but Marie's SS is the sickle cell uh, proper disease. So if you are AA and you marry somebody who is SS, chances are that you can produce all your pro children will be carriers, right? So there will be AS, so one A, S will marry, will, will, will pair with the S from the mother, A. So when it goes on like that, you see all the children will be 
AS, AS, AS. This is another scenario. If both parents are AS, meaning they are all carrying a trait, they are not sickle cell disease parents or patients, the possibility is that one out of four, 25% of the time, they can produce normal uh, or people carrying the normal hemoglobin traits, AA. 50% <clears throat> of the chances that they can produce carriers like themselves, AS. And then 25% of chances that they can produce sickle cell disease patients or uh, children, right? Now, let's look at this. If, like I said earlier, if AA marries SS, then they can produce normals and then carriers. If AA marries AS, they can produce normal and then carriers. If AA marries AA, they can produce all normal or offsprings who are normal, not carrying the gene. So how do we prevent this? If the prevention is at the point of marriage, so who you marry, right? So before you marry, you know, we have to counsel our children, our friends, that when they are they see their, their suitors and they are falling in love and they intend to marry, they have to do this test, HB electrophoresis, or check for their sickle cell status. If each of them, one is AA, the other is SS, they can marry and they will not produce SS. But that SS mother, um, they have a lot of issues during pregnancy. The anemia, you know, a normal, a, a non sickle cell mother already has a tendency of having low blood levels because of pregnancy or during pregnancy. So the person who is sickle cell, whose blood levels are not high already, when they get pregnant, the issues are more, right? But then when you are a woman and you are carrying, you are a sickler, we cannot say that don't marry. You marry, you sick, you have your, you live well, um, attend your sickle cell clinic and all that, take your medications for blood and other things that may come along seriously. And then you live well, healthy lifestyles. You can marry and have children, but then you should marry somebody who is not carrying the trait at all. So that is one way to prevent it. Another way is a normal person can marry a carrier. That one too, you can only produce people who carry, but not those who have the condition. And then two of you and AA, then you are fine. You are good to go. But if two of you are SS, you marry, you produce more sickle cell. If the two of you are AS, like I showed earlier, you produce sickle cell. So how do we prevent it? These three scenarios, when we are marrying or when marriage is being contracted then we can stop giving birth to um, sickle cell um, uh, children or people. Now, this has to uh, be, this can only be achieved through, through education advocacy and so programs to educate um, adolescents, educate um, new early adults uh, who are yet to marry campaigns and all that so that they can get to understand the way these things work well, so that they will not, we can actually stem the tide, reduce the prevalence if we do that. What are the symptoms of this condition? Sickle cell anemia, um, uh, one of the, so, so it presents as anemia or, or decreased number of red blood cells and oxygen. And um, for the image you can see, you can see the smaller palm looks white. The bigger one looks a bit reddish. So somebody who is anemic will present with very, very whitish, white or whitish looking palm. And there are other ways to, science to look at, you can look under their eyelids, it looks white, uh, but when the, there's enough blood, it will look uh, reddish. And the, the, the thumb, when you press underneath the thumb, you see that the, the, the nail, the thumb nail, becomes red or reddish, but then when there isn't enough blood, it will still remain whitish. And then the other ways we'll look at diagnosis. So you get to know how 
um, it can even be detected in the lab. Now, now if you have a baby who is irritab irritable, crying and fuzzy, um, you have to take them for checks. And for the ones that are moving about, they run a little, they are fatigued, easy fatigability or tiredness. Those are some of the symptoms of sickle cell disease. But all these symptoms that I've, I'm mentioning can also stand in for other diseases, many, many other diseases, medical conditions. So um, it's not to say that if you um, have this condition uh, or these symptoms, you are suffering from sickle cell disease, you have to go for checkups. Frequent episodes of pain, also known as crisis. Sickle cell patients are usually in pain. They have joint pains, they have pain from within the bone because of the secure cells, uh, secured uh, or badly shaped, uh, badly shaped, um, how do you call it, blood cells. When they are moving, they are blocking the flow of blood, all that leads to pain, right? So you can hear this term with sickle cell patients crisis. Uh, when the weather is cold, when they stay out late, they have crisis and all that. And the pain is not um, restricted to any particular part of the body alone. They can have joint pains, they can have pains in the thigh bones, leg bones, arms, everywhere, back pain and all that. And they also suffer some swelling um, of hands and feet. Um, and then within that sw swelling uh, appendages, there is also uh, pain. So it's not only swell, swollen, but there is pain, like you can see uh, on, on the screen. This is the, the uh, it's called hand foot syndrome in a patient aged 14 months with a certain type of sickle cell disease, right? So that's how, those are some of the symptoms, frequent infections. So they can easily get bacterial infections, viral, inf viral infections, and be falling sick and attending hospital or having to go to the hospital uh, frequently and all that. There's also delayed growth noted in children and even adults. So usually uh, sickle cell patients, a lot of them or most of them are shorter and smaller in, 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 in physique compared with uh, uh, the, their, their peers, right? So you can see in the image, they are all eight year old. Um, I believe that we all can suspect uh, the one that is sickle cell, the one, the short one in the middle there. So this also not to say that people who are miniature uh, in nature or smaller than their peers are sickle cell disease patients. No, but then that is what happens. It causes delays in growth. Of course, the sickle cells prevent um, easy distribution of nutrients and oxygen and all that. So these are factors that are necessary for proof. Enzymes and all that will not pass around easily. So reactions that will necessitate growing tall and bigger might be uh, delayed, right, because of the condition. They also do come up with vision problems uh, because when the small blood vessels behind the eye get occluded, then, I mean, the... the, the um, um, movement of blood, circulation of blood to the eye tissues and all that become impaired. So vision can easily be impaired. So those are some of the symptoms. How is this condition diagnosed? How is it diagnosed? Blood tests are performed to the testicular cell and linear. Um, so you go to the lab and then they, they check for that is for people who are grown. Um, and they can also be, cannot be taught, be tested before uh, birth, so in vitro, prenatal tests. Um, so they take some of the blood from the womb, amniotic fluid, and then perform the test, the test on it, and then it can be detected before the child is even born. Then early children, neonatals uh, can be screened, newborns um, screening. In many um, healthcare systems, there are um, wellness checks or wellness programs for neonatals or newborns. And so as part of this um, um, health checks, sickle cell is also uh, tested and then it's detected. Patient history. So the doctor talks about family history, 
um, find out whether you know somebody in the family who has developed it and all that because it's genetically transmitted. So um, if a parent or a cousin or an uncle has a possibility that it can be present, prevalent in your family is high. Physical examinations includes checking for symptoms like enlargement of the spleen, uh, pain history, and uh, looking underneath the eyelids, underneath the thumb, in the palm. So someone who is always anemic, by all means, sickle cell will be checked, right? Then uh, this common blood test, complete blood count or full blood count um, that is checked. You can see from the this uh, full sample full blood count report. Um, the HB here is hemoglobin. That's um, the, the the production of it. That's the gene that has an issue that causes the sickle cell disease. So you can see this person has a low level of hemoglobin. It's supposed to be between 11.5 and 18, and it's 5.5. So and other components of the full blood count can also be used to check for number of blood 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 cells, particularly red blood cells, their shape and uh, even the type of hemoglobin and all that. So when you, the, the, all they need to do is to go to the hospital, the doctor will check you, and then um, uh, the proper diagnosis can be uh, made. What are some of the complications of sickle cell disease? If, if left untreated, it can lead to bigger problems like stroke. Um, the way the sickle blood cells block the flow of blood it's just like the way cholesterol can even cause stroke in people who have high cholesterol by uh, causing what we call atherosclerosis. This time around, blood cells blocking the flow of blood, oxygen, etc., denied to cells uh, and tissues, they can begin to die. If it happens in the brain, then that is a stroke, right? And chest issues, acute chest syndrome, which is a life-threatening issue with infections and all that. Uh, they can take lives and all that. And also what is called pulmonary hypertension or high blood pressure in the lungs. So um, that can also be a complication. Damage to several organs, including kidneys, liver, the spleen due to reduced blood supply. So uh, if you keep denying your car engine, the, the, the fluids that it needs, engine oil levels go low, fuel or uh, gasoline or petrol goes low, you are damaging the structures in the engine, right? The various units, the same thing that happens. So the kidneys, you can damage the filtration units known as uh, the nephrons, um, the liver, the tissues can, can be inflamed and um, the cells can, can die. So the flow of blood is impaired. A lot of things, the spleen and all these organs can be damaged due to sickle cell um, disease. So I said something about vision already. So blindness um, uh, can be a complication. Even sores in on the leg, which don't heal uh, the way they should heal. Uh, we can even produce gallstones, right? So um, that's also another one. And there's this condition known as priapism or painful long lasting erections noted in men with sickle cell anemia. So because of the irregular or the impaired flow of blood to the tissues in the penis, um, when you sustain an erection for the blood to be withdrawn from the cells, it becomes more, it becomes impaired and uh, the sickle uh, blood cells can block the return of the blood um, and then the erection will be long-standing. It has to, such people have to be taken to the emergency room before they are uh, dealt, uh, given treatment and then the erection can be um, uh, uh, brought down. And also their bones get, begin uh, to become softer, osteoporosis. So they have they usually come up with joint issues because of this osteoporosis, and then you can develop fractures easily and all that. What are the treatment options available for sickle cell? Um, of course, I kept mentioning about pain. So painkillers are given analgesics to reduce to reduce pain during crisis, and um, they are, they are also give shown pain management mechanisms that are non pharmacological, like um, using hot uh, pain um, hot water bags and all that 
um, put them deep in the towel in hot water and using to massage the joints and all that um, application of pain um, analgesic containing um, ointments or creams that can relieve pain topically. Uh, uh, so all these are uh, mechanisms and and um, uh, to manage pain. So pain crisis has to be managed. Sometimes sickle cell patients have to be taken to the hospital to be given IV pain um, uh, killers. The very, very strong ones, the morphines and all those kind of strong drugs and um, uh, before they can uh, have some relief. There's a class of medications known as the anti-metabolites. Uh, these ones reduce episodes of pain as well. It's also said to stimulate production of the normal blood cells. So tackled from various angles, how can we get pumping the right kind of blood cells uh, so that these secure cells will reduce the number and then um, stop causing crisis and all that. There's also the uh, amino acids that are given to reduce acute complications of the disease, um, the crisis and all that. Procedures, bone marrow transplantation, also known as stem cell transplants. Uh, this therapy involves introducing healthy bone marrow stem cells from a donor. So the image here kind of depicts that. You can see the bone marrow uh, being replaced. So these are things that can be done, um, especially in the advanced world, to give some relief to sickle cell patients. Now, there's also the self-care. Um, there's the need to always do something yourself because these patients, they can really, really manage the conditions better. They know the trigger points. They know what can bring this crisis um, much more easily. So if you are involved and very interested in managing it, it can really, really be a plus for you. So there's the advice that you always talk to your healthcare provider before starting anything, right? So if you hear of something um, helping, like I mentioned, the use of hot parts to relieve pain, talk to your doctor, talk to your nurse, talk to your healthcare team. To They should give you the go-ahead before you do anything. Drink plenty of water. Um, um, if there are issues with the... Uh, with, with your kidneys, for example, then the amount of fluid you take in will be regulated. If there's issue with the heart, the amount of fluid you take in will be regulated. So that's why it's important to always talk to your doctor. They have your recent lab workouts, uh, lab results, and based on that, all the, the, the self-care tips that are being given, they can okay some, they can stop you from performing some or practicing some, and that's the way to go. Regular exercise, exercise actually helps to increase the pain threshold. So you have stronger muscles, um, the joint issues, joint pains, the muscles can carry the pain over and prevent the joints from being inflamed and all that. So exercise is key. You don't say that because you are sickler, you are breathless and all that, you will not engage in exercise. Probably the, 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 um, intensity of the exercise, that is what you have to look at. It should be gentle enough so that it will not inflict, inflict any further pain on you, right? Um, children can be vaccinated as per doctor's recommendations. So vaccinations come against bacteria that can easily cause infections and all that. So it gives them some reprieve um, so that the crisis or falling ill can reduce greatly. Um, Self-care again, there's the need to join support groups or clubs. So there are various support groups for sickle cell patients um, that people meet, they meet and they share ideas. Um, they, are, they know what they eat among themselves. They can share ideas, what somebody is eating to improve their blood levels, um, how somebody manages their pain. You can learn from each other. You know, These support groups just help people to cope with conditions uh, that are lifelong, especially. And there's the need. One of the things you need to do is to attend a sickle cell clinic and keep to the appointments so that your doctor knows you, your specialist knows you, uh, your dietitian knows you, um, so that they can also um, help maintain your blood levels and other conditions that may come along, right? So there's a need to take care of this condition. Um, and whoever has anybody who has sickle cell disease, sometimes they have they are given folic acid to be taken every day. All these things have to be practiced very well. Now let's go into um, an area that I call more of my comfort zone: uh, nutrition therapy for. 
uh, this condition, sickle cell disease? What do we do by way of nutrition? Um, there's a need to go through what we call the nutrition care process. Um, that is assessment, nutrition assessment. Uh, so this is necessary to assess the specific individualized nutritional needs of the sickle cell patients and address them appropriately. So what are the steps involved? We have nutrition assessment, nutrition diagnosis, we prefer, we prefer nutrition uh, uh, interventions, and then we do nutrition monitoring and evaluation. So when you come to my office, that's what I'll do. We assess your needs nutritionally and provide them, right? But then there are some general tips. For example, there's a need to consume well-balanced meals. Uh, this is essential in delivering the specific nutrients that will help resolve anemia and any other issues. So the well-balanced meal is not only targeted at increasing the blood cells or replacing the broken down or destroyed blood cells, but then any other condition that might come along, right? If there's an issue with the kidney, there's an issue with the heart, we have to do nutrition therapy. And then all this is channeled through um, healthy, well-balanced meals. So, so it's so, so important. I said earlier that the body needs a lot of nutrients to build blood, for example, and these nutrients you get by eating healthy meals or well-balanced meals. There's the need to always consume foods rich in folic acid. Uh, for example, the food sources are green leafy vegetables, um, legumes, um, orange juice, um, and fortified cereals. So some cereals like oats and others can be fortified with folic acid. So folate is very, very important. And if you eat balanced meal, which I described as a meal that is formed or made by combining ingredients from the various food groups, you are going to be in a very good position to manage this condition and get folic acid as well. You should also consume iron-rich foods. The examples of uh, food sources of Iron, uh, leafy greens, um, meats, poultry, animal liver, seafoods, beans, nuts, and seeds. C certain fruits like pineapples, like grapes, can also, and avocados um, are also very rich sources of iron, right? So if you look at it critically, all you need is well-balanced meals, food that is made from various food groups, and then you'll be able to even get your iron as well as zinc, zinc, sorry. So foods rich in zinc, you should consume um, adequate amounts as well. Lean meats, shellfish, legumes like lentils, chickpeas, beans, seeds, seeds like pumpkin seeds, sesame seeds, nuts like pine nuts, cashew nuts, almonds, uh, cheese and milk uh, as well. Uh, very, very rich sources of zinc. And all these come together to give you very correctly shaped blood cells so that you can produce better ones uh, in place of the circled or genetically determined ones that are bad. Uh, fruits with meals. This is a, an innovation that can really, really help the body to absorb iron and other uh, macronutrients necessary for building blood levels. So you eat fruits with your meal. So the orange, you take it with your meal. So just after eating, you add one. So the vitamin C from these fruits can really go in and help the body to absorb the iron that comes or that is present in the meals, right? And foods rich in calcium should also be consumed in good amounts or adequate amounts. So um, low fat or fat-free milk, yogurt or, and cheese, leafy green vegetables all will give you calcium, calcium fortified foods. Uh, bones and, and all that, shellfish and all that, um, like um, shrimps and, and all that can give you uh, good amounts of iron. Tofu, the soy products, or, uh, like, or soy, soy milk in itself can also give you uh, good enough amounts of calcium, right? There's also the need to take drink, drink enough water. Uh, we know that uh, nearly 60% of our blood is water and the rest are cells. So if we, you have a condition that um, um, has to do with low levels of blood, drinking enough water is a step towards um, improving your, the volume of blood, right? Or the amount of blood that you have. So adequate water intake, like I would advise any day, you drink water so that you will not feel thirsty. 
So drink water so that, so from morning to early evening, you keep sipping water. Don't even wait to feel thirsty because the moment you are thirsty means that your body, um, your body has uh, lost 1% of the water in it. So the body doesn't want you to lose even 1%. That's why it tells you you are thirsty so I can replace it, right? So keep drinking water. But when it's getting to late evening, you step down a bit so that you don't have to wake up too many times in the night uh, to urinate. You need that good uninterrupted sleep as well, right? So water intake, adequate water intake is important. There's a need to reduce salt intake to safeguard the heart um, and even the other organs like the kidneys. So not too much salt and manage weight to avoid joint issues. So if you are a sickle cell patient, there's that predisposition to um soft bones and fractures and all that so if you imagine carrying more weight you can have joint waist pain and uh, back pain will be more aggravated and the bones you can easily get fractures and all that so there's a need to keep weight down i mentioned earlier that sickle cell patients are smaller in size a lot of the time compared to their age mates but then there are some also who are heavy right so let's those who are heavy should manage the weight there's a need to lead healthy lifestyles, including exercise as well. I mentioned that earlier, but then be gentle enough. Um, you walk, and then I believe that um, Orlando is going to give us um, exercises that are safe for this condition for today because we are talking about this condition as well, right? So you do safe exercises, but then be regular with them. There's the need to also avoid what we call anti-nutritional factors. There are certain things that you take that will prevent your body from absorbing iron and other nutrients needed to build blood. As a sickle cell patient, you have to really, really be, be, be deliberate, intentional about um, avoiding those kind of foods, like taking teas. Um, they have compounds in there, uh, phytates and oxalates and those kind of things that can prevent you from absorbing your iron and other folate and all that. So be careful with some of these things, coffee, uh, abusing coffee and all that, and alcohol can be bad for patients uh, who have sickle cell. So um, um, I kept looking at the clock. We have to also take questions uh, before the exercise session, which comes um, around in the next few minutes, about 15 minutes. So I'll, I'll just summarize now. Um, uh, by saying that sickle cell disease mostly presents as sickle cell anemia and uh, other um, um, uh, variants or forms of the sickle cell disease, which I do not focus on today, the disease can degenerate into serious complications if not well managed. So anybody who has sickle cell, who has a family or a friend who has sickle cell, we have to really advise them to take care of, good care of themselves. And... Um, Vaccines do exist, and if administered, can lessen the rates of infections that are common to sickle cell patients. So, uh, children who are detected, they should be vaccinated uh, where the vaccines are available so that you can reduce the burden of the disease on them as they age. The best way to prevent these diseases is by not allowing marriage or childbirth between two parents who are careers. So, I said that earlier. That was the main thing I said when I spoke about prevention. So, we have to really, really love with our, our brains, not only with our hearts. And a healthy diet can provide nutrients necessary to improve red blood cells in the, in the blood. So the, the quality uh, of the cells can be improved by eating well. So healthy, well-balanced meals um, are, are what I would suggest. There was a session on healthy meals and um, just make sure that there's some carbohydrate on the plate, some protein, some vegetables in the stews and soups and salads and all that. Your meals will be healthy. Self-care practices are essential in living well with sickle cell disease. And so sufferers should engage in these practices and of course, in conjunction with their healthcare providers. And healthy living is key to the management of sickle cell disease and exercise should not be left out of this moiety. So let's do things right. Let's take care of ourselves if we have sickle cell disease. I end there. Um, over to you, Hiba. I believe we have some time for questions, and uh, we'll take the questions now. My contacts are on the screen. Uh, you can see them right now. And also, you can get a lot of information on nutrition from my blog, www.lecturebooks.com. You can send me emails, let's consult at gmail.com. 
get in touch on WhatsApp or phone call 0244090262. Of course, if you are contacting me outside Ghana, you add plus 233 to that. And then I also have a YouTube channel where I share short videos, one minute videos on anything diet and health. Um, that will just look for my name on YouTube, you'll find uh, me as well. And then my books, of course, Live Long by Eating Well, Eating to Prevent and Manage Lifestyle Diseases and Be Your Own Dietitian. Wherever you are in the world, we can send them to you. And they're also available on Google Play. You can download them. Thank you very much, Kiba. Over to you. Thank you so much, wife. Thank you so much. That was really very comprehensive. Yes, if you can just stop sharing, there are a couple of questions. Um, are you able to see the first one by Thelma? Thelma, we haven't forgotten your question. I just wanted um, Wise to end and then we can start addressing the questions. Yeah. Yeah. Are you able to see her question? Yes, yes. I've opened the okay. chat. I can see them. Okay. I'll go ahead straight and address them. Yes, please. So, I mean, let, just for the purposes of others who haven't seen it or others joining us on Facebook and YouTube, the question says, I'm in my early 40s and an um, SC genotype. I've observed for the past um, few months, my BP is always below, there's something blocking my view here, below um, something. Yeah. So any advice on diet? So it's, it's a question about um, what she can eat to improve her BP. Yeah. So um, uh, low BPs, uh, the cause of the low BPs have to be clearly determined before we go into therapies to control it or manage it, right? Um, so sometimes I'm very careful giving out tips on some of these conditions. Um, so we will have to, SC is a carrier and, um, sorry, it's, a sickle, it's another type of sickle cell disease, manifestation of sickle cell disease and low BPs in that. So I think we have to connect on um, individual levels. And then we can uh, suggest some solutions to the low BPs here. What's your take or advice on having sickle cell disease and being vegan? That to me is going to be a very, very tall order. Um, if you are vegan, you can still eat healthy and make blood. Uh, but then it becomes uh, more difficult to, to, to build blood if you are vegan and a sickle cell uh, patient or having sickle cell anemia. Right, so I will not wish um, uh, that for any of anybody who is um, having sickle cell anemia. It's easier to use the animal source proteins to correct the blood levels and all that. Um, I know plant foods like turkey berries, for example, can deliver a lot of iron into your diet if you are vegan, and that can be explored, right? Uh, but then it's much more difficult. You have to be more careful, be more intentional about balancing your meals, and you know, vegan diets are generally lower in calories compared to normal diets and all that, which is an advantage for someone who is losing weight or managing um, other conditions. But in sickle cell, I think it becomes more tricky, right? So I'll suggest that uh, you eat a bit of everything rather than uh, considering being vegan. Thank you for your question. Again. Can I just add that to it? You know, because there are some people who are just uh, religiously vegan. So if that is you, then you need to speak to a dietitian so yeah, they can help. Support. Yes, exactly, exactly. Yeah. So if that is who you are, then please um, just get in touch with a registered dietitian and let them support you. So you make sure you are not missing out on all that. You find other ways to get the very important nutrients that you need as a vegan as well. Yeah. Wise, you do agree with that, right? Yeah, sure, sure. So that's, yeah. uh, you will need a personal, everybody, yeah. personal doctor, personal dietitian, especially so that we can always calculate your calories, make sure that you're getting enough iron, folate, zinc. Like we have to really take care of you. Um, so it's a very, very on-point suggestion, please. That's good. Thank you. <laughs> so this is, this, yeah, there's a suggestion here. Um, Eabo says, well, and then the, there was a comment just complimenting you as always. Um, Eabo says another topic is to create awareness for, for the Blacks on how to prevent sickle cell, which um, Wise did at the beginning. If a carrier married AA, the parents should do the test um, to know the status of their children 
while they are young, so they are aware before they get into relationships. So I think Khan is listening. Khan is um, 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 listening to this. So I'm sure they'll take this up, you know, and, and do the necessary advocacy on this very important, like you said, prevention. We need to prevent it by not getting into the marriages or having, you know, avoiding childbirth in the first instance rather than going ahead. And then yeah. I like how you said, you said we should love with our heads, isn't it? So that's what you said. Yeah. So thank you, Ayabo, for that comment. Um, is it advisable to go on a weight loss diet? So I, I assume this is in relation to someone who has a sickle cell disease. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So I have attended to such patients. Um, so with the proper guidance, sickle cell patients can engage on weight loss and be very successful at it. So it's advisable just that. You should have the experts assisting with the process. Thank you. Okay. So, yes, again, just don't go on to any fat diets. Make sure you're getting the right help from the right person. Yeah. Um, um, what's the next one? Oh, anyone with an idea of how to locate sickle cell clinics in Greater Manchester? Hmm. So, again... I think we really need a bit more advocacy on this. I used to live in Greater Manchester, but I've left. So unfortunately, I don't have the answer to this. I do know Khan would know. And so um, um, Sam, this is a take takeaway question um, for Khan. They need to do a session on this and then, you know, put it out there. Where are the sickle cell um, clinics people can visit? Yeah, so, so sorry, I don't have the answer, but we will do well to um, let people know, especially the people in Greater Manchester, where they can find these clinics. This, this is going to go to Khan and they will address it. Okay, um, thank you. How did Blacks get to have sickle cell in their blood? The whites do not have it at all. Whites. Um, I think we have to start doing our own standards and blood tests and all that, building our own machines and all that. So that we can um, exempt ourselves from some of from some of these conditions, but then it's just a historical uh, presentation of of issues. Um, it just happens that yes, this is what is found, and it's true. Uh, our, our machines here also detect sickle cell in 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 us, right? So, and then if somebody has it, they, we see the symptoms and how they suffer uh, through it and all that. So. Um, probably um, with a lot of education, we can actually sickle cell, we can actually prevent. Uh, it's not like a condition that cannot be prevented. No, it is about marrying the right way and then stop to stop producing careers and stopping producing uh, sickle cell patients. So I'm sure that once there's um, more civilization, more education, and we love with our brains, like I said, and not only our heart and all that. Uh, some people, when they are in love, they say that they are ready to deal with the consequences. And then when they have children that they have to be carried, taken to the hospital every three days. Um, and then they know that the sequences are, consequences are really dire, right? So I think with proper education and awareness, we can really, really uh, reduce the statistics among ourselves as well. Thank you. Another interesting one. How did, um, no, that's not it. I missed it. Where is it? It was a question I saw. Um, do you see another one? I've just lost it. There was one. Um, yes, I saw one it? about stroke. When that stroke yes. can be reversed uh, sickle cell, in a sickle cell patient with diet. Mm. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm very careful in answering that. Um, mm. the, the, the diet can do a whole lot. Um, can really help uh, once diet is good and we are producing high quality blood cells the the burden of the disease can be minimized but but as to whether we can be reserved it depends on Re reversed right right it depends on the extent of damage and all that so i will stick my neck out now and say that when you eat well it can be reversed but eating well or being on diet having a dietitian um, or registered nutritionists can really, really uh, be of um, help um, in managing stroke in a sickle cell patients. Thank you so much. I think that was really thorough. Um, do we have any more questions that I've missed? Anybody has any pressing 
comments, questions, myths that they want to clarify on sickle cell. For anyone who missed the beginning, can it be, can sickle cell disease be, what's the right word? I just want to ask a very basic question, but um, you talk about prevention. Can you treat it for it to go away? Um, unfortunately, no, um, it cannot be. It's determined in the genes and that's how you're going to be for life. But then it can be, it can be managed you see, the treatment modalities can really um, help deal with the complications, uh, help deal with symptoms. This can be pain management. You can improve the quality of the blood cells and all that. And even there's the stem cell uh, the, the transplant thing that can be done. Actually, when that is done, it can actually be reversed, right? So uh, I can say that it cannot be taken out, but then let's lean more towards managing it well um, so that uh, we are safer when maybe someone goes to do something and it's not taken away fully right so it's about knowing how to live with it just like any other lifestyle condition you have to cope with it know how to live with it and then it's you are living as if it's not even there anymore because you are doing all the right things when people have crisis, you know, so you have major crisis, is there anything like diet that can help in the crisis situation? Yeah, so, you know, a crisis, uh, you, you, I cannot uh, propose anything that will, will deal with crisis, yes, but then crisis is a sign of the, the condition. So what do we do diet? We take in the right nutrients to build the, the best type of blood cells and have the right volume of blood and all that so that we can actually uh, prevent the incidence of the, the, the crisis. So that's how we should approach it, right? If you have sickle cell crisis, you have to report to the medical emergency so that you are, you are taking through uh, um, the, the right medical uh, protocols so that you can be, the crisis can be resolved. I will not say that I'm promoting nutrition. So I'll say that go and eat this, go and take that when you have sickle cell. I can end up killing somebody. Those are the plain terms, right? So let's do the right things. Then we can reduce the incidence of the crisis and manage the condition, reduce the anemia, be stronger and have better bones and, and, and muscles and joints and all that. And then when crisis do show, they are ugly heads we have to seek the appropriate medical therapies for them. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Weiss. Um, that's really, really very insightful. And I like that you say, um, sometimes people have this perception that, yes, as much as food is medicine, you know, sometimes people want to just use food for everything. And I like that you emphasized here that, yes, nutrition has a role to play, but you can't just focus on nutrition when you have sickle cell disease. You know, you have to seek medical attention and then nutrition can um, complement or support um, all the other stuff that WISE has spoken about. OK, so our time is up all too soon. Um, I know you gave us your um, some final words, but as always, is there anything you want to say so people yeah. can take away? Yeah. Yeah. So I want all of us on the call let's educate somebody who is not yet married about sickle cell disease so that they make an informed decision. Um, we can also advise people to screen. It, it's interesting to know that if I ask um, a question now, how many well, of us know our status? Uh, people, those of us on the call, I can see about 24 people on the Zoom and those even following us on Facebook and others. How many of us know our sickle status? Many will not know so let's get ourselves screen so those should be my final words thank you thank you so much wise and I, I wish we had asked that at the beginning we didn't get the opportunity to ask so please just this is a message to all of us all of us of african and caribbean origin we do know that this is really prevalent in our community we know that the only way is to prevent it and how do we prevent it 
knowing our cycling status. So if you don't know your cycling status, please, please, please go and check. Check for yourselves. Check for your children, even as young as they are before they fall in love, before they start thinking about marriage and before they think of having children. That's the only way we can prevent the incidents. Okay, advice to screen in at least two laps. <laughs> That's a good point in, in, when, when in Africa, I like that. Yes, yes, yes. So yeah, just make sure you're sure yeah, there can be false positives and false negatives and all of that. So yes, <laughs> please make sure you screen more than once to be sure of your sickle. But most of the time, you know, because it runs through families, you know, especially if you have it in your family. Yeah, most of the times you they will get it right. And you are positive that you're probably positive, you know. <laughs> Okay, so on this note, um, I'd like to say thank you to everyone. Thank you to Wise. Next week, Wise is coming back to do a session on liver disease, another very important topic, and diet. So please join at the same time. And as he mentioned, you still do need exercise, even when you have sickle cell disease. So please join Orlando now for some exercise or physical activity. Thank you all, and I hope to see you next week, same time. Thank you, Wise, once again. Welcome. Thank you, Wise. Thank you, Dr. Hibber. And a very warm welcome to the exercise part of today's session. As Dr. Hibber just said, we are doing box exercise tonight. So the first box exercise of this new part. Um, for tonight's session, all you need is plenty of water, uh, plenty of space, and a good mindset ready to go. All right, so let's get straight into it. Seven o'clock now. So we're going to start with a warm up, okay? A boxer size warm up. So we're just going to start with some straights, okay? So jabs and crosses, and we're going to go for 30 seconds. All right, people, let me turn my tunes up. Three, two, one. Now let's go shadow skip. Now shadow skip. Three, two, one. That's one. Also, twist. Let's go. Sit. Right round. Three. Two, one, next one, up a foot, up a foot. Ten seconds. Uh, okay, keep yourself a 15 second breeze up, and then we're going to go straight back into the warm up. Okay, people, back to your spaces now. Let's continue the warm up. <laughs> 
same moves, but we're going to go in reverse order. Okay, so we're going to start with some upper cuts. Get ready. Get ready. Two. Come on, let's go. Upper cut. Let's go. Two, one, toss on quick. Two, one, now shadow tip. Let's go. Three, two, one, all right, great, so that's one. Ten seconds. Three, two, one, time, time, people. Okay. Yourself a 30 second break. And then we got to go this round and walk, brother. Three, two, one, time, time, Okay, my people, let's go straight into it now. Round number one, entering the ring, game time. All right, so each round we do tonight will be three minutes, which is a full boxing round. We're going to start off with a combination round, okay, putting different punches together. All right, so we're going to start off nice and easy for the first minute. We're just going to work on jab, cross, jab, cross. We're going to throw it nice and hard, okay, nice and strong. Put it back into it. Remember, boxing's from the ground. Up. All right, so we're using the floor, we're getting our strength from the floor. So it's going to be one, two, one, two. Remember, if you've been on these poles for a while now, remember boxing the full body move, full body exercise. So really get your hips into the punches. So watch me on my jab, so lean forward, back foot on the cross, forward, cross. Okay, so jab, cross, jab, cross for 60 seconds. And then we're going to add to it, okay? Let's go, people. Game time now. Let's go. Okay, let's go. Get ready. Three, two, one. Start. Let's go. <laughs> You might go and pick them halfway. Thank you. 
Ten seconds. Three, two, one, and pause the clock right there. Okay. So after that last cross, I need 10 uppercuts nice and quick. So it's here. One, two, three, four, and then 10, four, six, eight, 10, and then straight back to your straight. All right, people, let's go. Three, two, one, let's go. Twenty seconds, we can keep pointing together now. And pause right there. Okay, for the last minute now, we're going to put it all together now. So we've got one, two, three, four, ten. And then we're coming up straight for ten, nice and quick. Eight, ten. Okay, so four, ten. 10. Let's go. Last minute. Three, two, one, go. Let's go. People half fresh. Twenty seconds, people. Keep working. I'll keep working. Five seconds. Two, one. Last time, people. Well done. Well done. Six second break. And then join me for about the two. Well done, my people. Twenty seconds, people. Twenty seconds. Okay, people. Round number two. Game time now. All right, so. Round number two, we have a cardio round, okay? Cardio conditioning round. All right, so the punches will stay the same. What we're going to do is, we're not in our guard now. We're going to go feet together. So we're going to go 10, 10, 10, okay? You'll do that three times, okay? So 30 each set of punches. So 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10. 10. And then 10, 10, 10 again. After you've done three lots of that, we're going to run it and down, okay? So hopefully you've got a nice hold space here. We're going to jog up. We're going to jog up. And we're going to back pedal back. Three times. Here, that's two. Boom. 
That's free there. Okay, so three lots of punches, straights, uppercuts above the head. Do that three times. Then I want a run, up your hold, back pedal back three times. I want to start back with the punches. Let's give that a try now, people. Let's go. Come on. Get ready now. Let's get ready now. Let's start with your punch. Ten, 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 three times. Three. Set on your buttons, back in butch. Let's go. Going. Let's go. Oh, half way out. Keep working. Keep working through. Ten three times on the legs, jogging forward, back and big back. Last minute now, let's go. Last twenty seconds. Keep working now. Come on. That's it. Whoa, last time, people. Back to your partners now. Take a well earned 60 second water break and then we're going to the third and final round. Okay. Okay. Fifteen seconds now. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, indeed. Well, let's go. Join me back in the ring now. Third and final round coming your way. All right, so third and final round will be a leg round. A leg round. So we're going to do now. Combination, so the boxing combination will stay the same throughout the round. I'm just going to pyramid it up. Okay, so going to be here. Jab, cross, hook, cross. Okay, jab, cross, hook, cross. We'll do that one time. Now we do two squats. So we're here. Okay, back to combination. One, two, hook, cross. We do it twice. Two, hook, cross. Once you've done the combination twice, I need four squats. So we're here. Oh, okay, and finally we'll do the combination three times, and then I need six squats. Okay, once you've done it three times and done six squats, we're back to the start. So one combination, two squats. Bam, two squats. Then it's two combinations, four squats, then three combinations, six squats. All right, people, let's try that now. Let's go last round now. Last round coming your way now. Let's go. So start with one combination, two squats. In. 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 One. Go. Two now. Four squats. Six squats down. Now back to the start. Pick one and two. It's what? It's not people. Halfway now. Let's go. Keep it going now. Keep it going. Let's go. Last minute. Last 30 seconds, people keep putting it together. Come on. Fifteen seconds, come on. Last ten. Three. Two, one, time. Well done, well done. Okay, take a 30 second minute to break, and then we're going to stretch up. Well done.
Okay, people, join me back in the center now. Let's stretch off. Let's start with the net. We're going side to side like so. Let's go. Up and down. I go around swinging it forward. And backwards. Change arms. And backwards. To the hips, big circles. Change direction. Last one, lunge and reach. So if you're gonna lunge around with your left leg, you're gonna reach out with the opposite hand. Okay, about so. Stretch that one. Stretch. Three more. Nice time. Well done, people. I'm not sure if Sam or Fraser are on the call. I'm not sure. Yes, of course, Alan. We're here with you. It's me. Thank you for the wonderful session today. Um, thank you everyone that's tuned in and stayed on to do the box exercise class and also to listen to the sickle cell conversation. I'm sure we've been educated and we're informed going forward to you know talk to our partners, talk to our children, talk to everyone around us and how to stay safe and do the right thing when it comes to nutrition and sickle cell. We'll be back again same time next week. I will look forward to continue the conversation with everyone and if you have any information or any questions please email health at con.org.uk thank you very much Orlando have a wonderful evening to everyone that's here you have a wonderful evening too bye-bye everyone have a great evening Sam have a great evening always